to Global State University in the Athletic Department today. Here we are back in the Waco Center for another edition of the Coaches Show, and our guest today is head football coach Mike Keller. Coach, good to see you again. Nice to see you. And a little better circumstances than last week yeah, uh, to have yeah. the conversation. Uh, uh, we're going to go back. Uh, first off, before we get into the, uh, the the specifics of the game and rehash some of those big plays, first uh, victory over Pembroke. You know, uh, we've only played them five times. They're new to the right. league. But the significance of, of getting a win. Shane does a great job down there to, yeah. to beat a program of that caliber. They're a, uh, they're a very good football program. We played them twice when I was at Concord back in the uh, – Early part of the 2000s, earlier part of the 2000s, and uh, was one on one with them. Played them at Lenore Ryan, so I'm very familiar. Shane uh, Shane Richardson, their head coach, was a graduate assistant. Was a really great football player at Northern Michigan when I was the offense coordinator at Northern Michigan. He played here before I got there, so I'm familiar with the program. Very familiar with Shane. I have a high deal of respect for them and the way they do things. Uh, they got a great recruiting area. It's a beautiful school. Um, they do a good job coaching them. You know, when I first came into the league, I was one of the ones saying, "Ah, this could be a tough. Yeah. This could be a tough game for, for one in this league." And uh, and it has been. Yeah, you know, it has been for us in, in the, the spring season, and then of course last season going down there. Uh, so to, to come away with a victory at home in your home opener when you were 0-1 in the league, one one overall, it's good for you no matter what. That you know, that's a that's a big win. But to beat a a, a, a very good program, very well coached team. Very skilled team like UNC Pembroke. That was a uh, that was a big win for us this past Saturday. I tell you, it really was. And uh, and speaking, I know you know you're good friends with Coach Richardson. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna give his program a shout out publicly. I know our, our crew called down there today. Of all the teams that have came in here, of course they had their meal out here after the game. Yeah. Uh, they asked for some brooms and they they left. They they cleaned it up as immaculate as any program that has ever been in here. Yeah. And I think it you know speaks volumes about you know the way he runs that program. Doesn't shock me at all. That's ex exactly who he is and and, uh, and what that program is. I tell you what. First quarter, each team went up and down the field, yeah. got a touchdown and a field goal. Uh, but in that second quarter, three big touchdown uh, uh, plays to put you up 31-10 at the half. Uh, that second quarter, uh, you know, I think. Uh, it was big. Really, game control at a high level there. Yeah, you know, a year ago we went down there and jumped on fourteen nothing, had a turnover, and some things happened, and we ended up getting beat by a couple scores. Um, this year here, for, you know, they get the opening kickoff and they drop down and, and really have a very good drive against us. We were doing some good things defensively, but they made some plays and they kick a field goal. I felt us answering with the touchdown to make it seven three us was was critical. Then they go back down and score a touchdown, and then we were able to answer with a field goal. And then really from that point on, our defense did a really good job and stiffened. And we kind of just continued to, to, to do what we had been doing. We, we were executing. We got the run game going, and we were getting some chunk plays in the run game. And any time you're able to get the run game going like that, then, you know, safeties get more and more and more involved. And we were able to hit some over-the-top plays. Yeah. I, I mean, if you look at it, if you were at the half, you would have said, you know, wow, explosive pass plays, which – Obviously, were true, but but in my mind as the coach, it was like, okay, we were we've established a run game, and we've got some people one on one, and and our kids made plays on those 50 50 balls, and and, uh, and that leads to a pretty good lead at the half. Yeah, because I said Jeff Miller only threw 14 passes. Yeah. It was 11 of 14, yeah. very efficient, but the run game yeah. is what really opened it up. Uh, well, I want to talk about two two big plays that really seem to be like key turning moments in the game. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm, first, I want to talk about the pass to Tariq Miller and that move, yeah. what that did as far as it really got the crowd involved. And then you deferred the kickoff till the second half. Yeah. And then that, that play, the Zaki's really, really seemed to be the dagger. It was critical. It was critical. Yeah. The, the Tariq Miller play, um, we, had a, we had a play called where he was supposed to run a deep comeback and, and we, we caught the coverage with, you know, some mechanical things there, but we saw the coverage and and we audibled, or I actually audibled it from the sideline with a uh, with a little bit of a double move. And Tariq, as a freshman, to get that audible, hear it from Jeff, get the play changed, and, and make a play. You know, Jeff yeah. did a good job throwing away from the safety, and and Tariq drove on the ball really nice and made a play. Um, that that gave us the, made it a 31-10 game. Yeah. Then we, you know, our defense holds them. And I wasn't super happy with the way we ended the half. You know, our defense holds them. We get the ball like at the 35 going in. We could have made it 38. 
uh, 10 right there, and we get a legal procedure penalty, then we get a tackle for loss. Now we're behind the sticks. And at halftime, I was really on them about, boys, we really missed an opportunity here. We could have, we make it 38-7 or 38-10 at the half with that final four minutes of the first half. We're getting the ball in the second half. If we could go down and score, now we can turn this thing into, you know, yeah. where we got total control of the game. Uh, so we got on pretty good at the half about the way they ended the last few minutes. Uh, probably one of the bigger plays in the game was, you know, the first play of the second half, we threw an out route or a flat route to Alfred, and it was a holding penalty. We got behind his chains, and we just handed the ball to Zaki on a, on a simple zone play, and he made the safety miss, and, you know, you know the stats better yeah, than I went 70-some yeah. yards. Uh, 78, I believe. 78 yards for a long touchdown. Now that made it 38-10, and yeah. really all the momentum and control of the game was – was on yeah. our sideline at that point. Well, defensively, uh, playing against a very good quarterback, yeah, there, and, really uh, good. Jones, and then uh, you all were able to, to get some pressure on him. Sure. Uh, I thought the last two weeks, you know, we talked about a week ago, the Concord kid's a really good quarterback. Of course, he's playing in the rain. And this kid here, you know, we, I got in this league in 2019, and we played, we played, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, Pembroke every year except for that year, and he's been the quarterback the entire time. You know, he's a fifth-year kid for him, um, coach's kid, really good quarterback, was audible in the protections at the line of scrimmage, uh, handles a lot of their run game, a very good runner himself, you know, poised kid. Uh, I thought our defense did a great job with, with a huge, you know, they had a huge task with a kid like that behind center, and we put pressure all day. You know, Coach Hill and the defense staff, they really did a good job of coming up with a pressure plan and, and rushing four guys, five guys at times, a couple even six-man blitzes, changing up who they were, changing the coverage behind it, um, and, and really stressed their offense. And uh, the key to their offense is, is the quarterback, you know, and then stop that run game. The week before, their backup tailback had rushed for like 178 yeah. yards, and it was the conference part of the week. Yeah. So for our defense to to be able to stop the run and still put pressure yeah. on them when they threw, that was that was huge for us. I mean, yeah. I must have went over to the defensive huddle and talked to defensive players. I don't know how many times during that game and said, "Hey, boys, if they don't score no more, they can't win." You know? <laughs> <laughs> and our defense just, you know, they were up for that challenge all yeah. day. Yeah, you know, they only had 36 yards rushing on tw- uh, 36 yards on 24 attempts. And you, know, you stop the running game like that, they can pin their ears back on the uh, Sure, know. sure. You make the third downs, third and long, you're behind the sta- sticks, and then, then your defense could be creative, you know, with, yeah. with the coverages behind and blitzes in front. Yeah. And, um, you know, it, it's – why don't you do that every week? You know, it ain't that simple. <laughs> you got to stop that run game first. Yeah. Yeah. Well, speaking of which, now we're moving forward to uh, Wheeling, uh-huh. going up there, you know, to uh, – uh, to the, the first capital of West Virginia, yeah. Uh, but they uh, a lot like us in that they're you know offensively some dynamic players yeah. and they've been able to put up a lot of points and got some playmakers. Yeah. Uh, what about you know facing up to that challenge this week? They got a very mobile quarterback. You know the kid could uh, he could hurt you. You know with with his running ability, um, he's a good drop back passer. But where he really hurts you is his creativity outside the pocket. You know when he breaks contain or steps up in and. And someone comes, you know, the auto brought game this past week, and the safety comes up to tackle him, and he throws it to the receiver behind his head, and all of a sudden it's a 70 some yard touchdown. Uh, that's where they that's where they hurt you. They got very good skill people, uh, just like they had a year ago. Uh, tailbacks are really good football player, both of them, really two yeah. tailbacks, you know. And in that day and age, you don't know, no one runs with one guy. They always yeah. have two or three guys. So they got two really good tailbacks. I think they block you up pretty good. They're, they're going to be a, 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 a stiff challenge for our defense. We've got our work cut out for us. Uh, we need a good week of prep again, and we need to travel up there and, and stay focused, and we're going to have to execute a game plan yeah. to, to stop their offense because it is a dynamic outfit. Yeah, we were trying to follow that play to play. It seemed like every time AB was going to put some heat on them, mm-hmm. somebody would just go you know go big on them and yeah. they'd come right back Big play them. after big play after yeah. big play. A lot, as you said, very similar to the way we were scoring, you know, just mm-hmm. a lot of – a lot of big plays. Mm. Well, I tell you what, uh, you know, this was, uh, you know, enjoyed the crowd, enjoyed the day. It was just good to have football back in here at Moore Stadium again yeah. and, you know, looking forward to it. And, uh, yeah, but what, 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 that's what I'll leave you with. Just coming back home and being here, uh, you know, back at home to yeah. get this season going. Oh, no, it was great. Um, to be honest, I mean, you had 19, we were undefeated, and then, 2020 was just messed up for everybody, and the spring season was very awkward. 
Uh, last year, I felt like we were still coming off that. This was the first time from fans to administration to 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 the way the team looked and played, where it felt like we were back in a normal ebb yeah. and flow. We had recruits on campus. It went really smooth. You know, the, uh, our game day. You know, we, we walked through up in the Lily beforehand, and then Doc Mansion, and the, and we get on the buses and we go through town, and that was very supportive. It was a great atmosphere the entire day. Everything went as planned on schedule, and then the kids did their part by by finishing the day yeah. off with a win. Yeah, big thank you to Dr. Mansion for being oh, able awesome. to orchestrate that uh, the the pregame piece. The band, and, the cheerleaders. It was it was a good day. It was a good day to be in Glenville. Yeah, and thank big thank you to Dr. Minnick, uh, the game day sponsor and uh, the celebrity coin tosser and guys, uh, the coin toss. I helped we won the toss. He started the day really. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. But uh, again, we'll be back next week. Uh, you know, here. So, doc, uh, Coach, thanks for being with us here thank today. You. Yep. And thank you for being with us out there. We'll talk to you next week.